It's goss time with my sister. Ooh, it's goose time. You know what that means. Super Bowl recapping, pop culture kerfluffles, and lots of TV announcements. Ooh, I'm going to get bumps on my goose. And we have an extra special bonus tip spot this week just for you. We put on our investigative journalista wigs because we are deep diving with the producers and the journalists behind the new Hulu documentary, The Housewife and the Hustler 2, The Reckoning. And it wouldn't be hot goss without a little deep dive into the DMs. You ready? You know it. Let's go. Let's goss. M. Oh. M. Mom! Welcome back Ooh. for another steaming, steaming piping, piping, scalding serving of hot goss, where we talk about events in our lives, oh. gossip and politics, and take a deep, deep dive die. into the DMs. <laughs> Let's get into some hot mm. goss. Love that hot. gossip. Hot goss. I want your gauze. I want hot gauze. Fierce gauze. Slay gauze. Work gauze. I want your gauze. Now let's get into some. Uh, hot gauze. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> what's up? This laser's cutting off circulation in my brain. <laughs> Oh, is that is that how you explain it? Is that how you explain? It? <laughs> That's how much I can move my arms. <laughs> uh, in case you can't tell, this is a video episode. If you're listening at home, you're like, why aren't they saying anything? Why are they just going? Because mm, uh, mm. our must looks be a speak for themselves. It must be a video episode because we are. Mm -hmm. I would. I would say I'm feeling myself, but my hands can't my actually choker reach my chest. Your my choker. choker came unchoked. Oh my god, where'd it go? It's in her decolletage. Oh, it's in your decolletage. Oh, oh, whip it out. Oh, whip it out. No, that's not where that goes. Pretty girl. Uh huh. Right there. Around the hair. Is this the new style? Cover that madam. Girl, stuff. if Maison Margela did it, honey, everyone would be gagging. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? You're right. You ain't wrong. Oh, I love they this. They did hair. a line of broken chokers. Do you want it back on? Welcome back to Broken Choker Diaries. This hair is the exact cut that Robin Tooney and Nev Campbell and all those girls in the craft have when they go from black to blonde with the hair. It's like such a good 90s supermodel. Yeah. Oh, so good. Big Play Vanity, won't she do it? I'm wearing uh, Chikatita. Oh, yes. Chicky made me this Does hair. that have a secret compartment? Oh. Sorry to clock your teas. <laughs> Sorry to blow up your teas on the spot. The secrets in your spires. Uh, this is a video episode. Uh, the full video episode is available via Mom Plus Gold, Gold. exclusively. Yeah. So if you're not getting Mom Plus Gold, what are you doing? Probably Get on Sniffy's Gooning and Baiting, huh? <laughs> gooning? Gooning. Can, can you goon and bait at the same time? Yeah. Bait is short for master. I never knew that and those went just, together. Yeah, and goon is when you go... <laughs> and then you make a stupid smile because you're so cock drunk. <laughs> is it real? Oh, it's real. Then why is it new? It's not what? new. It's just that it's okay to talk about it. So this has been something that has been happening since time immemorial? I mean, I assume it's been happening at least as long as, like, an American tale. Five will goes west. <laughs> Five will goes south. Honey. Fievel. Fievel? I've got Fievel on it. It's more like a six or a seven -ol. I don't know. Now I want it back on. Yeah, I think it looks good on. Will you do it? <laughs> well, super whole Stylist Sunday. credit Big Dipper. Which one? Not too tight. Tighter. No. <laughs> <laughs> and a little lower. I want it below the Adam's apple. I want my Adam's apple to press, but I don't want it to be levitating. 
He's doing a lot of work. I haven't seen the Super Bowl at all, but I have things to say about it. Oh my God. I <laughs> saw the best thing about the Super Bowl. What? The Beyonce Verizon commercial. It looks Because it had I'll Tony Hale from like Veep. The, it looked good. Like that. Morgan, not so fair child. Morgan, unfair child. I don't know. Listen, it's fresh out of the bag. I gave it a little tease on the top. I feel like a moose when I wear hair this small. Old teasy topper? Old teasy topper. Like, I understand that this is what human hair looks like, like normal person hair looks like, but that doesn't resonate with me, and I don't I don't care what reality is. Yeah, nobody wants attainable normal. I uh, could be a correspondent on Fox News. But anyway, wait, what were you saying about the um, Super Bowl? Beyonce had a Super Bowl commercial. She had this amazing space suit by Michael Nguyen. <laughs> I don't know how to say his name. It's N, a G, another consonant, and an O. Okay. Um, it was a cool space suit. Announcing she her, was gravity. Yeah, announcing her country album, which is Renaissance Part 2. Yeah. And then there's a song called 16 Carriages. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty good. Yeah. And, and Texas love. hold them. And her hair at Super Bowl, just like this like bed heady, hot roller, Texas fuck hair. It was great. It was so was great. she in the Super Bowl show? No, she was not. Was she in the audience? Yes, she was. Being what hot. Privilege. Uh -huh. And her daughters were there. Jay-Z was being a halftime dad for her daughters on the field. Um, and Jay-Z stood up and said, do you know that Beyonce has never once won the Super Bowl? <laughs> she won. She has. She won year. when she did when she did her show. She won that year. She like popped up as a surprise too that night, didn't she? No, we knew she was doing the Super Bowl. She took the night. She popped up with Bruno Mars. That was a surprise when she did she formation. She took the night that night, and then mm -hmm. she did it the next time, right? No, she did it before Bruno Mars. But. I think she left her hair there, so she just came back. She's like, I'll do, do it with You her know, uh, I'll do a pop-up. <laughs> yeah. um, don't you think, I feel like Raven right now in All-Stars 1. Don't you, Kansas City Chiefs, I could not believe you started dating Taylor Swift, the biggest pop star in the world, and you made it to the Super Bowl. Lo and behold, you weren't winning, and oh my gosh, and it was so close, and then it went into overtime, and then you won the Super Bowl. I could not believe. What? How? How influenceable is a football game? I don't know anything about the institution. I don't know anything about the sport. But is it influenceable? Is it like drag race? Like if they want you to win, they can make you win. If Not an, that that's ever happened to me. If one of the refs has a call that has um, a, a game-changing call on it, maybe, but... Did I, that happen last night? I did not watch. I had to work. Busy pee. Some of us work for a living. Thank you very much. On a Sunday, on a Sunday. you were called into the office. <laughs> I had to work. That's hot goss. Do you know how influenceable it is, Dipper? No, they they play sports with their physical actions. We can't, you know. How it's it's scripted like a Hollywood picture. How and Taylor wasn't there at the beginning, but she rushed to get there on her she on got one there, of her two jets, and she got there. She got there just in time, and then they came back and they won. What is that? How? By the grace of God. <laughs> Listen, and it's good for the goose and it's good for the gander because the NFL has made a ton of money off of Taylor Swift's affiliation to it. So there's so much money involved. Why would they not want them to make it to the Super Bowl and win? Do you have bumps all over your goose? Honey, bump, bump, goose. Did you see the Wicked trailer? I did see that. Now that was great. Yeah, the dude. Ariana Grande. Sure. Cynthia Erivo. Sure. Uh, Jeff Goldblum. You're green. 
Yes, yes. I am. <gasps> uh, who else? Michelle Yeoh. Uh, lots of stars. It looks great. And the poster, I thought the poster was brilliant because it's like the wand and the broom and then the girls and the shadow, it makes a W for Willem. <laughs> they wanted me to come see it. And she does the riff, she does the meatball riff at the end. Which was originally the Shoshana Bean. Oh yeah. Yeah, Shoshana used to do that riff. It was Shoshana's last night, and she was like, I'm going to give him a little something. A little something. I'll get written up, and I'll get fined for it. But they care. really did give girls notes. They're like, if you can't sing the score as written, don't sing it. They do all that. They do. They're serious. Well, not with Miserivo. They said, go off, sis. Uh, it looks burble. It's the Burble gurgles? It's the cummerbund. It's forcing everything up or down. <laughs> Libidinous. I'm breaking out the Westwood. This is obviously a very important day. Wait, also important. You were on Drag Den with Manila? Absolutely. You went to the Singapore's? Where was uh, it? I went to Manila in the Philippines, yeah. And it was amazing. Is it she was, Filipino? Uh, I would yes. say yes. I love that. I would say yes. Um, uh, you look great. Thank you. It was a really fun time. When I tell you, being on a set mm -hmm. that isn't in America, there are different rules. Well, yeah, did you get guys? There's there's an end to a work day on an American set, typically. It's like, okay, if it hits a certain amount of hours, you can't keep the crew and you can't keep everyone. Those rules don't apply over mm -hmm. there. Did you it's have a like, hard out? No, we need to keep going. It, I think it was like four in the morning we finished. Uh, I and I had just flown in the next the day before, but you know, your body isn't adjusted. I was sleeping. I was <laughs> sleep by the end. I was like <laughs> I was very ready to sleep for sure. <laughs> but the Queens? Mama. Oh yeah. Congratulations to the girls. And I had a really great time. Manila is so amazing as the hostess of this show. And the queens that she fosters and has on the show are brilliant, gorgeous, inspiring, hilarious. It was really cool. Marina Summers on Drag Race UK. Can we? Oh, girl. <laughs> it was so sickening and so well put together. It's like before Drag Race UK, I guess some of the girls rehearsed their talent shows. Hate it, bitch. And memorized aspects of them. Made dances that went along to a company. Sang songs. <laughs> Twirled balls on strings. Lit fires. Well, it goes to show you, though, and this is why UK versus the world is a very interesting show because the girls who weren't on flagship America race, they have something to prove and they don't want to just prove it to themselves or their country. They want to prove it to the whole fucking world and RuPaul. They're Can like, we... I've never met RuPaul. RuPaul has never seen me and mama, I'm going to give her something to see on this first day. That part. I feel like the American girls are a little complacent. They're like, well, I'll do good because I'm one of the American girls. I'll do fine. And those Australian girls already know her too because she judged down there too. But sure. Not, but not anymore. She's leaving. And that's T you heard from Race Chaser. Is that some sort of insider dish? Yeah. Where does that come from? Sources. You asked RuPaul herself. Oh. She said Mama Ru. <laughs> Mama Ru, let's snatch a crown. Mama Ru, let's push the couches out of the way and dance in your dining room. I forget who told me, but Michelle Visage is the new host, and Sasha Colby is the Michelle Visage now. What sort of wild imagining <laughs> is this? I you don't know. A lot that of the stuff I say says. I say says things. <laughs> I have glasses on. You can trust me. T. 
Take it with a grain of fucking ketamine, okay? <laughs> well, you never know. I love it was a great theory, though. Just like the Super Bowl being rigged, we're going to be right back. A little bit of sea salt. But let's throw it to the rainbow spotlight. <gasps> sea salt. Ooh. Ooh. There's a rainbow <laughs> spotlight. Okay, what's going on? What's the tea? What's Where, where is that? Rainbow spotlight. It's called Supernova by Kendall. I love this song. So this, oh, sorry. <laughs> Are we keeping you away? I, listen, I just flew <laughs> in. Me on the set I of Drag Den. I was sleeping. Girl, it was a girl. I would. Girl, I took. I take naps. Take it up. I love We're going on break. Take it up. We'll be right back. Wendy Williams has a documentary coming out. It's on Lifetime, February 24th and 25th at 8 p.m. It's the first time I've ever seen her without a wig. In one of the commercials, they show her without a wig, and they're like, the bumper is her looking at the camera. You see the whites all the way around her eyes. She has something called Graves disease, which increases the pressure in your head, so it makes your eyes kind of bug out a little bit. But the accompanying voiceover is, is it just... This is not just alcohol, or this is not just drugs. It's something else. It seems like she's in an altered state, and there has been a conservatory. Cons conservatorship. Conservatorship. But she's also an EP on the documentary. She's also an EP on the documentary. <laughs> but that means so, like, you know, she's approved of everything that's happening. Yeah, but girl, I'm an EP on all these mom shows. So, And you are and the quality you control. approve of shit. I approve of some things. You think the hair should be bigger, don't you? I think you? the hair should be bigger. I think Heidi should shit in the parking lot. <laughs> because that was the best some ratings. Ratings. That would yeah. be really good. Let's watch Heidi take a dump in the parking lot. Diversify the content, honey. Uh-huh. Niche. Mm, guess markets. what she ate. Uh, are you going to watch it? I will absolutely watch this. I mean, Wendy Williams, you can... You can have an opinion about her, but you can't deny the fact that she is a fixture in the world of Hollywood and entertainment. You're going to get all up in her business like a Wendy interview? Like a Wendy interview, I will hunt you down. The reason I do the after show is I stole it from Wendy Williams. Speaking of people hunting them down, there's a show called Selena and Yolanda. The secrets between them on oh, oxygen. Oh, now this. This is a true crime programming selection. Um, apparently, Yolanda has some new information, but Selena's entire family is not having it. They're very upset about it. I think she's available for parole coming up soon. And she's trying to change the narrative around herself and her story and try to justify the fact that she killed Selena. No justification. There's no justification for that. Uh, I don't know what she... <laughs> Welcome back to hot gas because we are all just like bur burbling and gurgling and bubbling over here. Welcome back to Happy Guts. <laughs> oh my God. We're all going to shit ourselves. Yeah. There's only two restrooms here, so we're really going to be shit out a lot. There's no mirror in it. Well, one's out of There's commission. There's one on the floor. One's out of commission? Yeah. Por qué? I don't know. I've just heard tell that it doesn't work anymore. Oh, you've heard tell. You know <laughs> nothing about how that happened. <laughs> how dare you? I don't fucking it was know. It's probably me, Paul. Yeah. Flushing spaghetti down the toilet. <laughs> Yolanda killed Selena and is now trying to spin the narrative as to, you know, 
why that happened. I don't like it. Me neither. Will okay. I? Will I watch? I don't know. Is Selena in it? No. Oh, I'll be dreaming of me tonight. I'll watch anything with Ms. Quintanilla in it. Anything for Selena's. We would like to take this moment to remind you to vote for all the wonderful properties that the mom girls are appearing on. Yes, vote for the Queer Tees this year for best podcast. There's Very That, or there's Very Delta. There's Race Chaser. You can vote for Meatball for Drag Royalty. Absolutely. You can vote for uh, Drag Me to Dinner for a TV show. You can go over to QueerTea.com slash QueerTeas and you can vote every day until February 22nd. So we recommend doing that. Mm -hmm. Do it quick. Do it fast. I'm doing it right now. Oh my gosh. I would do the same thing. But your phone is turned off. But it's I can't just... move my arm that far. Oh. I have to rock forward to propel me even to move this. Vote for us for the Queer Tees. Do it now or else. Or else what? what I would like mean? to do a healing sound bath. Trust no fart. You are beautiful. Keep N doing you. No matter what they say. You're beautiful inside. UK doing versus you. the world can't bring you down. Who else stood out to you on UK versus the world? Well, I just want to talk about Mayhem more because I love those bowls. Those bowls were so in tune. And that hair looked so good. And I was just like so impressed by the the art direction and the set that I didn't, it kind of distracted from her performance. So I didn't catch it all. How was it? It was so good. Traveling with those bowls, I think, would be the hardest part because they're very fragile <sighs> and heavy. They filmed in the UK, right? I'm really not sure. I hope that she takes that act on tour, though, so I can see it. If she, yes, I think it would be a really good idea if she actually did do that. I think she won't. I think we'll, she'll never reference it again and she'll want it to just be forgotten. But I think she should own it, do it word for word, lip sync to it. I have a question. If you were on a show and you were trying to show that you had a talent, would referencing something where you were previously before trying to do the same thing. Like as soon as I forgot the words on something, if I was on my knees in that situation, I would have just done the last thing that happened when I forgot the words and gone, the question that, the zip is that. And then gone around the bowl and said, good night. I thought it was like the perfect opportunity just to make it even funnier and then be to like. do a, a playback, a girl, callback. Because like it could have been, Short, sweet, like if you can't be good, be quick. It could have been louder, faster, funnier, boom, bang, out. But it just. It was mired with issues, unfortunately. Yeah. And then she was in the, then she was in the worker with the girls and she was like, so we could make a deal. I could save you. <laughs> like, what? Well, you already? Like, the, like you'd. <laughs> Like, what What are you offering in this deal? I'll give you a, you give me immunity and that one wig over there, and I'll give you long COVID. It's like, <laughs> it's like if I just crashed my car and totaled it, and it's burning and flaming and rubble, and I come over to you and I say, you know what, I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to drive your car for you. Who are you driving? I'm gonna, I'll do something really nice for you. I'm going to drive your car, babe. Who else stood out? Oh, um, Marina, uh, and Madam, uh, Madam, 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 Madam Tall Girl, Madam Gray, Madam, what's her name? Uh, Tall Bitch, Grand Dame, Grand Dame. She was funny. She was so great. It I made, loved it. It made no sense, and I was into it. And the fashion is beautiful. The mug is there. I was just, I was sad for my sister, but also, if you forget something. That's probably indicative of you not rehearsing it enough. You need to drill that shit. You need to film yourself doing it. Watch the playback back so you know. If you're on a stage this yeah. big, you need to record your rehearsal so you can see what they're going to see and make sure everything's right. And I feel like if she would have done that, that would have meant that she ran it at least two more times to set it up, to see what was right, to adjust, to do it again. And it feels like this was like a great idea, which wasn't 
fleshed out with the necessary tools of running it and drilling it. Yeah. And then if that didn't work, having a having a plan B cheat option, like writing the words in the bowls where only she could see them sure. or writing them on her hand or something. It's like they didn't know that you were forgetting the words. You could have just made something up. And why are you laughing sure. at your joke? It wasn't that funny. It was a comment. It was amusing. The jokes were good, and that's what makes... Joke. That's... A <laughs> Joke. <laughs> that's what? what makes me wonder what the rest of the act would have been, like what the rest of the uh, the jokes and the progression, progression would have been. I hope she releases it. I hope she does it somewhere else. Like, get it, girl. Milk this moment. Everyone's talking about it. The quest for, is out, it's out, it's out, it's out. For better... Then, for, then the it eyes? goes into that. The yeah. Woke. Girl. Woke. I would, Woke. A lot of people would have um, loved that slot on that show. And I think that um, the work wasn't done to ensure success, probably. Well, speaking of work being done, you're going to be on stage at Fat Slut tonight. <gasps> I am. That's at right. The Precinct with The Meatball, Miss Mam She, Misty Violet, Queen Sheba, Shanita Blunt, and Charlene. Very do we do we think that Meatball is going to win every category at the Precinct Awards? I think she's about to sweep. I think she's the Beyonce of Precinct. She's gonna she's be like Lauren Hill to, with her Grammy. She is going to win every Precinct Award. Mark my words. I really think so. I, I, I would love to see um I wouldn't call it a clean sweep, maybe a dirt sweep. <laughs> um I would You're, love to see her. I am a champion of, of Meatball, and I would love to see... Champion. Uh, greatest happen. of them all. Mm -hmm. Never going to fall. Never. Mm -mm. And still standing pretty tall. This is a song, isn't it? You'll always be a hero. Uh, 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 oh, RuPaul! Uh, oh, yeah. I love her! Yeah. Oh, so good. Champion! Speaking of RuPaul, there's even more drag coming to television. We're here. What if it was the legal? What right. would be on TV? Hmm. No TVs. No TV. <laughs> no TS. No TV. No uh -uh. CDs. Uh uh. <laughs> CD Cindy would be uh, rescinded. <laughs> TS Bev would be out of a job. TS Bev. Uh, TS Bev. Bubble butt. <laughs> Uh, More drag on TV. We're here, season four, premiering April twenty sixth, and the queens are doing press. Uh huh. They were at SCAD in uh, Georgia, doing a little hop up. Don't pick your scads, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, the girls all look great. They don't look like they're going to the same party. Well, Sasha Valor is uh, going to ask her master to unlock her pathetic cock mm -hmm. in this fetish outfit. She looks great. She's going underground. She's going to the downstairs part of the Eagles. That's where she's going. Oh, yeah. they only open the roof on the weekends. Yeah, she's yeah. going there. Priyanka is giving... Um, she looks like Giselle from Real Housewives of Potomac. Stone tights. Going to a simple brunch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, loose, loose barrel curls. Sure. Jada is in a purple ostrich lavender look. Sure. And Latrice is a uh, Lady Turquoise. Yes, Lady Turquoise. Mm -hmm. The girls look great. Can't wait to see how this new season of We're Here goes with a new batch of girls spreading inspiration around the world. Mm -hmm. And we love to see it. We're going to take a break. Yeah, let's do it. Attention listeners, we have a very special tip spot for you today. We had the pleasure of sitting down with some of the journalists and producers behind the documentary from ABC News Studio and LA Times Studios, The Housewife and the Hustler 2, The Reckoning. Available now on Hulu. Fun fact, The Reckoning was the name of Willem's first album. We chatted with these groundbreaking journalists about all of the continued drama in the Tom Girardi and Erica Jane fraud case and how it has directly impacted 
our community. Let's take a look and listen to our interview now. Hello. Hello. My name's Alaska. And I'm Willem. And we want to welcome you to our very special investigative journalist tip spot. Mm -hmm. We are here with Matt Hamilton, Jake Lefferman, and Knez Walker, who all worked on the new Hulu documentary from ABC News Studio and LA Times Studio. The, the Housewife, Housewife and, and the, the Hustler 2. The Reckoning. It's a new investigation into the accused greed, lies, and secrets of disgraced ex-attorney Tom Girardi and, of course, Erica Jane. The 90-minute documentary features exclusive footage of Tom Girardi's estranged wife and Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Erica Jane, meeting with fraud victims and explosive interviews with Jane's former costume designers, Girardi's former clients, foes, and friends. This is a follow-up to ABC News' wildly popular The Housewife and the Hustler from 2021, and the documentary just came out this week on Hulu, and it's really good. We are so excited to jump into this conversation because it's juicy and scandalous. Hi, how's it going? It's going well. Great. Great, thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you. Oh my gosh, yes, we do look great. Thank you. <laughs> Stop. We're just journalists doing what journalists do. The Housewife and the Hustler Part 2 of The Reckoning has everything you could want. There's uh, there's criminal intrigue. There's uh, entertainment, blonde hair. It's got it all. And I think it's very in line with the type of work we're trying to do at ABC News Studios, which really taps into the cultural zeitgeist. What are the stories people are talking about? How we can um, add to that through our backgrounds in journalism. And um, add investigation to it. Yeah. It is, a, you know, again, where, where places collide, this is where investigation and pop culture come together and create a story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's a lot of bullshit on TV. So we have to, like, cut through. And podcasts. And get, like, real reporting <laughs> and, you know, get true, factual, verified information out there. Well, so. that's what we do. We don't work on conjecture or rumor here ever. We're mm -hmm. investigatory um, pundits. And we love teaming up with the LA Times. This is our second piece we did with them. We did the Randall scandal as well. Um, and it's great. I mean, it's these two awesome groups of journalists coming together and doing what I think we each do best, doing it together. It's mm -hmm. It's been great. Yeah, very complimentary. You know. So how did you all get involved in this story in particular? Oh, gosh. Because it I goes mean, back years now at yeah. this point. Like 2020? Years. Um, yes. Uh, so Erica Girardi filed for divorce from Tom in on election day in 2020. So that kind of kicked off a lot of my interest in what happened to Tom. Like, why was Erica leaving at that point in time? Um, because like the whole premise of their relationship on the show is he's a rich lawyer, you know, she's the wife of a rich lawyer. So I was very interested with my colleague, like, why would she leave now of all days? So Mother Hubbard, the cover was bare. And so what, you just looked into it and you were like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we started looking at the court system, like what uh -huh. was going on with Tom's life. So we looked up the divorce file and there wasn't a lot of detail there yeah. yet. Um, but like, we realized there were all these lawsuits that had been filed against Tom that no one had really written about. Um, and it seemed like the walls were closing in, but mm -hmm. it just hadn't yet become public. Like all these like lenders, former clients, everyone was just kind of like slowly um, trying to get money that they were owed. So Right. For us, it was a little bit different. Matt is doing this as, you know, a lot of research and looking into it and in December, he and Harriet put out the LA Times article that everybody read. I didn't, I at the time wasn't watching Housewives, so I kind of wasn't caught up on that pop culture thing. Yeah. My boss called me one day and was like, I want you to write up a pitch for a documentary. And I was like, that sounds great. And he's like, so there's this housewife. And I was like, oh, I don't <laughs> Not watch housewives. the housewives. <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do with that? And he's like, no, 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 go read this article and call me right back. And I read the article and I called back and I was like, you have got to be kidding me. Like, it's a much bigger story than it looks like when you're just saying, oh, there's a housewife and her husband. Because right. it goes so much deeper than that. It's Iceberg, a, baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just a tiny tip to like a huge, huge problems. We so like that, big tips. Yeah. <laughs> and back in 2021, when we did the first documentary, I think 
a lot was unfolding in real time. We were just following the news as it came out. And I think the audience and, and we all had a lot of questions. So we knew we wanted to keep reporting, keep looking into this. Uh, and with Erica meeting with the victims and everything that was happening with Tom in court uh, last year, we felt like it was time to revisit the story. Because the first one came out and it really was just like, hey, you've heard that this thing is happening, but there were no charges there. The bankruptcies had just started. He had not been like put in a conservatorship. Nothing was really going on other than like everybody heard there was a scandal. Mm. And we were able to get in touch with a lot of the people who we now know have either filed claims in the bankruptcy, say that he stole their money. A lot of the victims have have been very like upfront about coming to us and saying, yes, it's important that we tell our stories. So how did y'all know each other? You worked together before. I know that there have been several journalistic endeavors from um, each of the parties here. Big words make yeah. us incredible. Yes, yeah, being a journalist like drag race, like you all kind of know each other and you're like, oh, you, yeah, you work on that newspaper or whatever. Like, she how, body, pea there's, body. Yeah. yeah there's there's, some like, of a, there's that. like a web. It's yeah. Community. There, yeah. There is. I live. Kenneth and I work at ABC together. So we've known each other for years now mm -hmm. and done a lot of stories yep. uh, together. And I obviously followed Matt's work mm -hmm. and are a big fan. And when it became time to like start doing the story, we wanted to interview Matt in the first documentary. And I, we were talking to one of our good friends and colleagues who works out here in Los Angeles, and she's like, you know, he's my best friend, right? Oh. And we were like, well, okay. Call him up. <laughs> Call him up. God's yeah. a funny lady. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, people are obsessed with Erica. She's on Real Housewives. She has um, a career which she purports to make music. Um, I do acknowledge that sound does come out of her mouth. I will not call it music. Alleged music. Alleged music. Yes. How big of a factor has she been in all this? Is she trying to... What What is her role in this? That's tricky to answer. Uh, she didn't work at the law firm. Um, she, she, you know, wasn't. did not... She was the wife of a rich attorney, but she's not a lawyer herself. She's never gone to college. Um, Did she know, sit on a board, though? At mm. Girardi Keys? Mm -mm. It's just Tom, but I think when it comes to like the day to day law firm stuff, she was really not involved in any meaningful way. Um, but I think a lot of clients knew her publicly. So they, they're coming to Girardi Keys, at least in the later years, with the idea that, oh, that's that guy I saw on TV on Real Housewives, or that's, you know, this guy's married to Erica. So she's, she's involved, but not in any formal way. And he was featured on the show. So when she was on the show, she did not hide the fact that he was her husband. She kind of, it was a big part of her persona that my husband was the famous Aaron Brockovich lawyer that, and he made appearances on the show and he would be present mm -hmm. for, for different dinners or events or whatever it was that was going on. So it's, um, it, it, the two worlds definitely collided. Okay, so what I want to talk about right now mm -hmm. is Marco Marco. Because yes. we, she's involved in that. So. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the, Erica's in that. Marco Marco is a designer, has made clothes for us and all of our friends and pretty much every drag queen that you can name. Uh, and also is located right next door to Willem Studios. So huh. we, we, we love Marco yeah. a lot. So what the fuck happened with the Marco Marco Erica Jane thing? I feel like Matt should take this yeah, because you I knew agree. about it way before I we did. I feel like I need a whiteboard <laughs> yes! and like a carry on Homeland. Mm -hmm. Just like, yeah, yes. this and this and this. So yes. it's really complicated. But it all boils down to Erica got her costumes from Marco Marco. Mm -hmm. um, is costume even in the right word? Like designs, like outfits for her performances. Apparel, couture. Um, and her dances, her dancers. So for years, she purchased them from Marco Marco. Yeah. And at some point, she, in, in her telling, she became aware of um, credit card expenditures for Marco Marco. And she claimed that they were overbilling her and that they had actually falsely billed her for her costumes. And she then turned around and reported Marco Marco to the Secret Service, claiming that they had defrauded her. Um, and... It's just so complicated. Yeah, it's straight to and this, is, again, this started way back in like 2016, 2016. when she's yeah. just joining Real Housewives. And this is something that nobody knows is happening at the time. Mm -hmm. So, right. the, you know, the country's getting introduced to this this woman and her husband on TV. 
But behind the scenes, there's something happening that nobody mm-hmm. really knows about, that this is all kind of falling apart, this relationship between this now new housewife and the designers that have been putting together her looks for the last three or four years. Mm-hmm. So Erica claims that at some point she became aware of like what Marco Marco was charging her. She thought it was fraudulent. She then turns around, reports them to the Secret Service. The Secret Service then files criminal... Then, then as an investigation, and Chris Pasila, your friend, the co-owner of Marco Marco, is charged with wire fraud. Um, and the accusation is that he fraudulently billed Erica out of tens of thousands of dollars for hundreds costumes. Of hundreds of but in the, the actual charges. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But then um, the suspicion is hundreds of thousands. Yes. What he was eventually charged with was still tens of thousands of dollars. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, so it was it was lot. great to see in the documentary that uh, those charges had been like clearly refuted by the meticulous receipts and the outfits that she wore and all of the designs that went with it and the text messages and everything that came into this, this, the discovery through your work and this show to know that like you know the customers that helped build her are not trying to take her down they're just trying to make her look pretty like. And I think it's important to note, you know, it's still ongoing. It's not an adjudicated case yet. So I think it's something that's going to continue to attract headlines and get attention. And people are going to keep talking about because it's far from over. And it's one of those things I think people have a lot of interest in because people haven't, they haven't seen, been able to see or meet Chris yet. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I think Marco is the more, the more front facing person because Mm -hmm. I've been following Marco Marco for years, like whether it was. I don't remember who the first person I saw in like a Marco Marco show, but yeah, I've been following Marco Marco for years. All so. the girls. Anybody when with I, an E, Brittany, exactly. Nikki, Katie, <laughs> all like the Outside of the music world, yeah. and then of course, if you're if you're in the drag world, yeah. I mean, again, the studio is like across the street from WoW. So. He worked on Drag Race, too. Exactly, That's and worked on Drag Race. And, Every celebrity yeah. that you can think of, yeah. Katy Perry, um, Iggy Azalea, Britney Spears, I mean, it's amazing. But the key faced, like, his life would have been over. You know, he faced years in prison. Um, you know, the might of the federal government was up against him in this case. And he lost, he and Marco lost so much. And for those who are listening that haven't heard the specifics, like the government, uh, sometime during the pandemic, uh, voluntarily dismissed the case completely. Um, they just went into court and said, you know, we're dropping all charges. Um, they offered no pub- no explanation at the time, but they told me, um, it's because of evidence preservation issues, which is still something we're trying to figure out what that means. Like, does that mean we don't have the evidence? Does that mean we botched something in the investigation? Does that mean, I mean, that could mean a lot of things. What was I mean, the evidence to begin with? Because all it was was her word, it seems like, because Marco and Chris had all the receipts and everything And again, in order. a lot of that's been, it. it's difficult as... Jake pointed out that the case is still ongoing, right? It's actually just really in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And Chris himself talks about how he didn't, he had not had any connection between, he had no idea that there potentially was any connection between Mm -hmm. his case, the Secret Service, and Erica and Tom in any way, shape, or form until he saw the LA Times reporting that kind of laid out who knew who. Again, no direct links, but Mm -hmm. that there were connections that he was unaware of. So I think in the course of putting together doc- the documentary, which you pointed out you get to see, is they filed a lot of stuff. So they file text messages and they file photos and they file, um, you know, the correspondence that goes back and forth. And they've, on the Marco Marco side, put out every transaction that they say happened over the course of those three and a half years that they were working together, um, which in the paperwork, Chris and his team are saying, like, this proves that we we can account for everything that we charged and everything that we made, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the other thing was, though, is that we did, Erica's team did sit down for interviews for this, which is not something that we always get. Um, and Jake actually went to that, and they say that they have counter arguments. So watching this all happen kind of in real time has been, has been kind of wild, too. Yeah. I mean, the... When we talk about the Girardi case, we're talking about, you know, in a general terms, like corruption. We're talking about how rich people um, are able to exert influence on our government. Uh, and often it's the little guy who gets crushed. And we see that in the bankruptcy case. We've seen it with, you know, all these people who, 
you know, trusted Tom as their lawyer and were, you know, didn't get their full settlement. They were swindled out of money they're owed. Um, and then the Chris Pasila case is just very different, but th- you see the same themes. Um, and it's clear, like, the person who was running the Secret Service office in L.A. at the time, Rob Savage, um, he was a friend of Tom's. You know, I oh. had all these photos of Tom Girardi parties over the years, and I remembered when I saw C- Rob Savage's photo on Google, I'm like, wait, I've seen that guy at parties. Like, I've, no, I'm not at the parties. That's what but I say like, about Alaska. So, <laughs> I've seen that guy. Seen that so guy I'm party. thinking, like, what... It just was very striking to just dig deeper and find this connection between Erica, Tom, Secret Service, and then you see Chris, who, you know, was facing so much time in prison and was not told of any of these connections between the law enforcement that's supposed to be invest that claimed to investigate him, um, and, and the supposed victim in the case. Mm-hmm. So, and again, in the legal documents, because you did sit down with the team with her team, they maintained that. She, she, she did that on her own. She never talked to mm-hmm. her husband. That there, that whether that connection was there or not, she didn't actually use it. So right. there, yeah. like, like I said, with everything being so ongoing, you are it's, literally. We spent a lot of time in legal documents mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And the fact that they all are filing so much means there's a ton to dig through. Erica was involved in a Secret Service investigated case years ago. Like her cosmetologist, I believe. Um, was accused of credit card fraud. And the Secret Service had investigated that. So hers, in her account, she had gone to the Secret Service because, mm-hmm. oh, they had handled a credit card fraud case for me before. So What's, why is the Secret Service... And isn't that, that is, the president's... We have like, that question too. Yeah. Yeah. We get that question a lot yes. from people. And it's that technically the sec- Secret Service also works under the Treasury Department. Mm-hmm. So they do help investigate financial crime. Okay. We talked to a former um, Emily D. Baker, who's a big podcaster. Oh, Emily. She, hey, yeah. Emily. <laughs> she uh, helped break it down for us in the sense that when the Secret Service gets involved, it's usually because it's it's a fairly big, very, very sizable case. Mm-hmm. It's something that rises above like the county. It's going to go to the federal level. And right. it's usually pretty big. She did tell us that she was she was pretty surprised when she saw the numbers and the details on this case because all she does is dive into legal documents. Mm-hmm. That for her, having worked in Los Angeles, that she felt like it was one of those cases they would have kicked down to a lower level. Mm-hmm. So she she said there was some, for her, there was like, it was a lot of intrigue in looking into why this case went the way that it did. So the Secret Service does investigate financial crime, mm-hmm. but she was a little surprised that it was this financial crime. The the interesting part I found about uh, Erica saying she did this on her own without her husband knowing, seeking the refund from Amex and digging into Chris and Marco and those accusations was she also says on the show, uh, her paychecks go straight to Tom. She signs him over. Mm-hmm. And then for Tom to be in the dark about all of this when she claims to give all of her money to him, it seems like conflicting statements. And she has yeah. said before publicly, um, I take shit off the runway, my money origami. I'm hot couture. I've changed the game. Now say my name. Is that from the Bible? <laughs> it's from It's Expensive a. to Be Me. Oh, yeah. It's from yeah. a Bible. Um, <laughs> not the Bible. Yeah, um, so it's it's. I understand how people can be confused at the depths of of all the details of these cases because that makes no sense at all. Who would do origami with money? You can watch the rest of this interview on the Mom Podcast's YouTube channel. So check it out. Let's take a break. break. We go spelunking, unking, unking, deep inside the DMs. This first message comes from Gonzalo. That's so weird. I just said Gonzo earlier. Gonzo, yeah. yeah. Hello, Alaskarino, Wilhelmina, and Dip Dip Arena. Calling a mandatory meeting to the Distinguished Board of Race Chaser Corporation 
As a non-official intelligence analyst, I should provide you with some good news you should highlight in your pod. In the last episode of Drag Race Season 16, the winner of the mini-challenge, Tsunami Muse, has given her prize to her sister, Hershey. Prize. Has given her prize to her sister, Hershey. I think this person is. This is because of her DACA status and not being able to leave the U.S. See attachment, kind regards, Gonzalo from the Netherlands. Oh, she won the Spain trip, huh? Yes. Tsunami Muse tweeted or X'd, or whatever the fuck it's called now. She said, I loved getting to show off my flamenco skills in front of the iconic Charo taking home my first mini challenge win. Due to my DACA status, which I'm proud to have the opportunity to highlight on the show, I can't just randomly make it to Spain. But production still wanted to honor my win with instead gifting me $5,000. I'm grateful for their support and swift action behind the scenes, ensuring I was awarded a prize for the win. But since I'm unable to use the prize trip to Spain, I have consulted with the judges and the decision is mine to make to gift the trip to a fellow queen, Hershey Lacour Jeté. Spain awaits you. That's a sister. Mm -hmm. That's a sister. Hermana. 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 Gracias. What a nice girl. Tsunami, we applaud you. We do. That's really fierce. The next message comes from Ellis. Dear Dolls and Dip. <laughs> it's a long one, too. So. Nine weeks. It's really just better for all of us if you read it. Nine weeks ago, I discovered the song Up Front by Sunky Angel and tagged Race Chaser in a comment requesting it for a rainbow spotlight. I wasn't even, it wasn't even Sunky's video. But she still stopped by to like the comments so she might be a friend of the pod. Mm. Nine weeks of anticipation led to a moment of pure ecstasy as I made my lunch in my kitchen while listening to Hot Goss and heard that up front was the rainbow spotlight. When the song started... Spit your coffee all over the place. I began acting out the intro conversation and then dropped everything to start throwing ass and whipping my hair. (laughs) It has been unseasonably warm in Indiana. Scary Gary. Indiana. And right when I was about to start wall twerking, I spotted my neighbors and their small children enjoying lunch on their back patio. (laughs) Their neighborhood doesn't have any fences, so they could have seen everything. I tried to play it off in case they didn't, but then they picked up all their food and ushered their children inside. (laughs) This is just another relationship that my race chaser addiction has ruined. (laughs) One time in an airport, a haggard traveler walked past me and I said out loud, I just saw a messy man. (laughs) He heard me, snapped around to look, but by then, I was twiddling my thumbs and looking at the ceiling like the innocent little angel I am. I just saw a messy man. That's all for now. Love you. Miss you. Mean it. Ellis. Innocent little sunky angel. So, what? Is that how you say it, sunky? Yeah, I think so. Made so, what's he lunch. blaming us for? Listen, we had heard about in. this song before you tweeted it to us. No, she's being playful. But, Ellis, we appreciate you. <laughs> so... What is that? Were you twerking outside or inside? I think because it was inside, but people had a view. Windows See, open. This is why curtains are important. You're allowed to do whatever you want in your own house. Mm-hmm. And the kids got to learn sometime. Some people have titties at the top and dick at the bottom. Well, yeah. That is not an excuse to call people a messy man. Just because, you know, you see drag queens do it on YouTube and Mom Gold Plus does not mean that it gives you license to call random strangers a messy man in the airport. So I don't recommend doing that. Mm-mm. Uh, thank Titty, you. Titties at the top. Titties at the top of dick at the bottom. Sunky Angel, if you ever want to come on the podcast. We got you, girl. This is an open invitation. From William. Mm. William's triggered. Dear Lackey, Willie, and Dippy, first t- long time, first time, I recently watched the film All of Us Strangers, starring the hot priest from Fleabag, Andrew Scott, as a middle-aged fag living in London. <laughs> Over the course of the film, he develops a relationship with a younger man, played by Paul Mescal, hmm. while, all whilst dealing with his grief for his dead parents. I won't give away spoilers, but the film deals a lot with what it means to grow old as a queer person and experience loneliness. I came out when I was 25, I'm 31 now, and I've spent the last six years working on myself and all the shit that comes with heterocloisetry. Whilst I feel so many parts of my life are the best they've ever been, this film has me worried about the future. Coming out later means most of my friends are straight. They're all getting married and having kids. 
My family, who I'm close with, have all moved away from London where I live. Without a queer network as a single person, I'm suddenly worried that I will find myself in middle age lonely and living a life with regret. I wanted to know if this is something you ever think about or worry about. If you have any advice for me in my panicked state, attached is my drink pick for priority boarding. Just so you know, your podcast is already such a tonic in my life. Love you all so much. Willem, he's got the $100 check. Oh, wow. This is a giant dick. I'm going to need a yardstick. This is like, you know, the building that where the Twin Towers were and they rebuilt one large tower. The obelisk. Kind yeah, of this is like that. in the center. This yeah, is like honestly. The Tower of Freedom or whatever it's called. <laughs> I could, it could set me free. Oh, mama. Let me tell you the events of that tragic day, 9-11, honey. Those nasty, shady terrorists hijacked... To, have you seen this? <laughs> no. Someone asked ChatGPT, the AI thing, to explain 9-11 in RuPaul's voice using all drag lingo. Oh, my God. It's really funny. I'm going to send it to you both. But um, and uh, uh, more about this cock. What do you think? This cock is... Just um, between us girls. This cock is bigger than that big, like pointy Washington Monument in Trafalgar Square. It is Trafalgar Square? It is beautiful. It is uncut. There's veins that look like a maze that could keep me occupied for hours. The towers fell like a bad wig in a lip sync battle and the world was left in shock. The drama was real and it shook us to the core. Lives were lost and it was a moment that changed the world forever, darling. Darling. <laughs> shoes? This is so fucked up. William, shoes on the bed? <gasps> And living in London? It's a croc. It's a croc. It's a shoe. How shoe? One would argue. There's no need for it. <laughs> even if it is a house shoe. A, a croc comes off so easily. Look. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. God. Sorry. <laughs> no, I think it's... Did I fuck up mother's camera? That <laughs> shoe came awfully close <laughs> to this <laughs> face. <laughs> Could have helped. Um, I think that just because you came out in life does not mean that you will, late in life, does not mean you'll be alone. Um, especially with a dick like that. Like, even if you're ugly, people will fuck you and you can make friends with people like that. Um, Listen, just because you have a huge cock doesn't mean you can wear your shoes in bed. I mean, <laughs> some things are just, it's just not civilized. Yeah. But, um, uh... uh I think my advice here is to fucking hold on to your friendships because you can't, I mean, you can't, those things as you get older are the things that will keep you safe and keep you uh, uh, sheltered and keep you sane and keep you connected. So don't take any of that for granted ever, no matter what phase you are in your life. And you've got, I mean, you're 31, you're young still. Because we pretend that we're still young and we're much older than that. <laughs> yeah, we are. Anyway, thanks for listening. Your family probably moved away because they don't like you either. Uh, um, what is that? Why'd you have to come out? If they really liked like him, that. they probably would have stayed nearby. Why'd you have Hate to come it, bitch. He's that way. Uh, he's got a big dick. He can take it. Oh my God. I can take it. Thank you so much for listening and watching this episode of Hot, Hot Goss. And a special thank you to our tip spot journalistas. Thank you. And make sure you watch The Housewife and The Hustler 2, The Reckoning, streaming right now on Hulu. Remember, take a moment to rate and review our show on your podcast apps. And a shout out to all of our Mom Plus Gold subscribers who are listening to this episode ad free behind the good pussy paywall. Yeah. On Mom Plus Gold, you get full video episodes, which means only our gold members can see us right now. Shh. Oh my God. I think I'm going to take my blouse off. I'm taking off my thigh highs. <laughs> I was breaking out the Westwood for everybody today, too, if you didn't see it. Sign up for Mom Plus and Mom Plus Gold by visiting mompodcast.plus. Follow us on Instagram at Willem at the only Alaska 5000 at Race Chaser Pod at Mom Podcast. Yeah. Stay safe out there, everyone. Mm, and we'll be back next week with another steaming, steaming piping, piping, scalding piping. serving of hot gas. <laughs>
Oh. M. Mom! To get access to our monthly video episodes and tons of bonus content, sign up for Mom Plus Gold at mompodcasts.plus. Hosted by Alaskan Willem. And produced by Big Dipper. Editing and sound design by Will Pitts. Executive produced by Willem Alaska, Big Dipper, Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. Our theme song is by Alaska Thunderfuck 5000. Who, me? 